emotions are always high for a rivalry game, and we welcome you here to Whittles Field, the campus of Archbishop Spalding, as the Cavaliers host the St. Mary Saints, who are sitting at three and eight this year, the Cavaliers at six and four. Pleasure to have you with us here today. Christian Taylor, Andrew Scally, Sean Hatley here with you. You know, these two teams, they're rolling into this part of the season. St. Mary's looking to rebound. Spalding looking to climb their way to the top. Big matchup for both of these two sides. Yeah, I think you said it. This is definitely an opportunity for both these teams to kind of set that second, you know, third of their season in the right direction. Spalding, you know, a tough loss against Gilman, a game where they were competing, you know, pretty admirably up to the first half, and then kind of wheels fell off in the second half, and, you know, the score was definitely not indicative of how close the game was, but definitely looking for a bounce back from them to kind of get the season going back in the right direction. Spalding are in the black, moving from left to right. St. Mary's in the white, moving from right to left. And we don't even get a face-off to start the game. Ryan Criswell was set up there, along with Steven Schumer, and it will go away of Spalding. We like those face-offs. No competition, just give it to the offense, let's see what they can do. All right, what did both of you expect out of this one today? I expect Spalding to get back to their basics. I mean, you know, Andrew was just saying they, they had a tough loss against Gilman. I think Spalding's want to get back to what they want to do, which is play hard defense, win the middle of the field, and, of course, press on offense, play fast, play loose, get some goals in those unsettled situations. Yeah, and for me, I think you mentioned earlier it's a rivalry game, right, so there's definitely heightened emotions. For me, it's, it's winning that emotional battle and playing within the system. It's easy to get excited you know, offensively, defensively, maybe you slide too too aggressively, trying to make a play. Offensively, you dodge, you know, one too many steps into trouble. So if you can manage that emotion and play within the system, uh, I think Spawn can be successful here. So it looks like one of the shot clocks was not on. So they have gone to readjust it just to make sure that it is in favor of the offense. And there a little we go. delayed, opening 15 seconds here between the two sides. Immediately get some sort of a shot off, and it ricochets wide. And out of play, it stays with Spalding, though. Good hard dodge there. Let's see just what type of energy is brought out by both of these two teams here tonight. With it is Brady Mollett. He's been so good this year. 13 goals. There it is. And there's a wonderful opportunity and goal. Connor Wilbert gets it going. Tell you what, I like what I see so far from Spalding. Talking to Coach Hockle before the game, you know, he had an emphasis offensively for dodging the score. You know, dodging with a purpose. And right there, Mollett did just that off, off the end line. Drew a double, threw it back, and Wilbert did the rest. Yeah. And Mollett, Mollett has really emerged as kind of that quarterback back there at the X. Um, as someone who can beat his man, but also dish that ball around uh, to some other scorers. And his assists have risen this season, second on the team with 17 this year. Now Wilbur scoring just his sixth goal on this season. Won by St. Mary's, and they'll get their first offensive possession here, trailing 1-0. Coached by Victor Lilly, he's been here for a bit. St. Mary's trying to win back-to-back -back games against Spalding, one last year, 17 to eight. It's the Cavs who won the two years prior. In 22, they won eight, six, and in 21, won 10, six. Yeah, for the seniors, this is a chance to finish three and one against St. Mary's. So it's a, it's a pretty big game if you're a senior. This is Brimall. Looks to get something on, and it's angled wide. It'll be reset with the Saints. 35 on the shot clock. Just allow this play to develop here, St. Mary's. You know, three and eight. They've played tough in a good handful of games, just not quite the results that they've had in, in previous seasons. As that's a little too high off the stick of Gannon Cope, one of the captains of this team. Yeah, 20 seconds on the shot clock here. It's been a good set defensively for Spalding, so. McAndrews and whips course, it in. 
and snuck that in near side. Yep. So both number sevens for each side have opened up the scoring for these two teams, and here's another look at how it went down. The old announcer's jinx. You know, giving the defense <laughs> too much credit. And St. Mary's makes them pay. I did see, though, after the goal, St. Mary's sideline went right to the kayak celebration. So we'll see. It. keep an eye on that for the start, rest of the game. Hopefully it's the, the first and last you know, that we see, but like the creativity. Windy evening here as it's won by the Cavs, this face-off. Great face. Oh, great. Now Matassa walked the tightrope to keep it in. And here's the whipped in again. Cutter Wilbur's wow. got two. <laughs> that, is, that is some unselfish lacrosse right there. Great face-off win by Criswell. Great heads-up play by Matassa to get that ball back to Criswell. And that's you got to love to see that. that. That's that fast start that Coach Hockle and Coach Cottle want to see from this team is come out and take it to St. Mary's. Yeah, Matassa won't get his name in the paper for that one, not even as a hockey assist, but... The play he made on the sideline, kind of tight roping, keeping the ball in play, drew drew the double, found the open man, and uh, it was a great you know transition play from there. Small things like that that help manufacture the goals, especially early in the game right here. I mean that's that's a big momentum builder for him. And another faceoff win for Criswell, who's fifty nine percent on the season. Yes, indeed, one hundred eleven and seventy seven coming into this. I'll trust your math on that one. <laughs> a little too much. It's Friday afternoon. <laughs> Take it all but 28 this year, by the way, Chris Well. Nine and a half to go. Spalding lead 2-1, and now Another it's 3-1. One. Wilbur Great. with almost a three-minute hat trick. Less than that. Great look back by Gordy Bennett. I mean, Scally, what, do you, what was your take on that play right there? I mean, I said it off the first dodge of the game. They're dodging the score. They're dodging with a purpose, you know, getting a good head of steam in front of them. And they found a shorty-shorty matchup. When you can find that matchup and you can dodge hard against them, you're going to draw some attention from a slide, which frees somebody else up. So if you're in the right spot, all you need to do is connect one pass, and you have a step-down shot like we did right there. And one thing, Andrew, I think we, we talked about in some of the previous games is they were getting – shot opportunities but the shot quality was not there it seems like right now they are getting the, the quality of the shots has increased and a lot of these shots are starting to fall i'm hoping that keeps going yeah man it's definitely a high percentage shot right there i'll take that 10 times out of 10 hands free 10 yards step down shot spalding back with the ball here it's connor wilbur who that 10 out of 10 times <laughs> yeah. wilbur you know entered with five goals this season he's already got three with a very fast hat trick. Andrew, what was your fastest hat trick? Uh, about three years, I think <laughs> it took to get there. And there's a crease violation. They're going to take it off. But this is an opportunity. Right now, I would say the next minute and a half, if Spalding can level the emotions and not play too high, not play too low, I think it's going to be pretty telling for the rest of the game. It's, it's what I alluded to earlier in you know, the broadcast. There's a lot of emotion. You hear the crowd getting into it. You see the sidelines fired up and celebrating. You got to stick with the system here and, and play sound offense and defense. And right it's there. forced see, away. I, I, I love how they were pressuring the adjacents. You saw Ben Duffy um, shutting off that other midi, which allowed Robbie Hopper to really go to work. And you could tell that the other St. Mary's midfielder was not, not looking forward to going up against Robbie Hopper. Offsides, should be an offsides there. I think they missed one on the substitution there, but keep playing. 3-1 for the Cavs early on, and St. Mary's have really only had it for 30 seconds. Eight minutes to go here in the opening quarter. It's a weave through by Moss, the sophomore. Maybe a little bit of a touch on its way through. Logan Earl is the goalie, the senior goalie. Clock reset. And they're going to pause here for a moment, perhaps maybe to get the clock right. Should have been a reset, so I don't know why they're bringing it back down to 47. There we go, back up to 60. Now they'll go again. 
They've been basically perfect Spalding on their time down here. An opportunity for, to get another one. Great. That is brilliant by Matassa. Great shot. A little near side low, Andrew. Yeah, I think Spalding has found something, you know, potentially in film here. Is you know they're sending that shorty shorty matchup or or a big little as they call it. You know, a, a shorty shorty matchup goes back to set a pick on the attack with the long pole to try and get a switch. It creates a little bit of confusion for the defense. They have to talk through it, either get above the pick, switch, or get underneath. And so right there, they they didn't switch. Good hard pick, came around and buried it. Well, they only scored four goals in total in the game against Gilman. They already have four, not even five minutes in here. Yeah, this is the start they needed. And they're back on offense. The faceoff working tremendous favors right now. Seven twenty remaining. It's the idea from Wilbur, who's really come alive in this game. And there's a chance, but a losing run. it was Newell. Scuffling for this one in the area was also Mollet, and it's brought in by the goaltender. I'm not mad at the look. I, I, you know, Wilbur did a great job drawing a double, found the open man inside it. It's a tough handle, right? Oh, if you're good. going south to north to catch that, collect it, and turn and try to there. Yeah. Quickly tack it in. Looks like that was a force. That's just it. It seems like they're. They're swarming nicely defensively, a little uncomfortable whenever they've got the ball, St. Mary's. Yeah, I think that's a testament to not only the defense, but also just what's happening from the face-off X, you know, and offensively for, for Spalding. When you haven't seen the ball in a while, you get kind of get ants, you know, you get antsy, and, and you want to make a play happen, and right there, you know, played in Spalding's hand and turn the ball over. But also Spalding taking some of these long possessions early, really going to sure. really pay dividends in the long run with wearing down St. Mary's defense. That defense has been running for a bit. Whipped it again! Goodness me! Goal after goal for the Cavs. I believe that one goes to Classic Jert. Getting, getting other people involved. Watch this again. This one quick hit to the left, and he was off to the races. Wow. Look at that position, too. His first goal of the year. It, it almost looked like St. Mary's was expecting a slide, and no one came. And I think I think Mason was just as surprised. <laughs> and what I like there, though, is he dropped his hands. The goalie mirrored that, and he brought it back up top. So anytime you change your plane as a shooter, you give yourself a better opportunity to score. And, you know, Mason, <laughs> despite not having a lot of shots on, this, on the season... You know, cash is in right there. It's excellent work by Andrew Reese over there. Meanwhile, it's on the ground. A slap in by Caden Cunningham, one of the captains as well. And right into the stick of Gracie Dunn. It's good response by these Cavs. Mad scramble for it once it's on the ground. And Archbishop Spalding have been first two. Again, another another possession. This is it's just it's so tough when you're a defenseman to just constantly be playing defense. You're you're worn out, start making mental mistakes. Going across field was Harrison, and now there's a little bit of space. So this is Gannon Cope. Hits to his right, fell a little contact up top. Play continues. I think that was a good no call there. Cole Krasinski, one of the top offensive threats of this team. 50 seconds for the Saints. Also could be an opportunity to give your defense some rest here. Opportunity too high. Newman was I'll intrigued. I'll give him that shot. Yeah, I think you got to be happy with that defensively. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing more you can ask. You just got to trust your goalie to make those saves. Four and a half to go in the first. Newman had thought about it. Here's a step in for Cope. It's popped free. Rebounded. Saved by Newman. And he wrestles it in. And there it goes. Hopper's open. Good outlook pass. 
Hopper has a couple of goals this year. He passed it to his left, right on the doorstep. Matassa, wow, another. That was pretty. Wow, wow, that wow, wow, was wow. pretty. Da -da -da, da -da -da. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, man. The Let's starts down that here. One, that, that one back. With Newman in, in cage. Hopper with a potential takeaway to a stop by Newman to a perfect outlet back to Hopper. That effort right there started it all up. Hopper knew already, didn't he? <laughs> Great patience. Great patience by Matassa. I mean, the vision from Newman to Hopper, yeah. Hopper to the point, point down to Matassa. That's just good lacrosse. Six to one, Wilbur three, Matassa two, Classinger one. It, and another Chriswell win, perhaps. So he went right inside to it. Steve Still comes involved. out of the scrum. Yeah, Moss had had it for a half a second. See if they give him the push. Nope, play Harrison off. for St. Mary's. The one thing that I just don't want to see Spalding do is let off the gas right now, right? You get a 6-1 lead, you just want to keep that pedal down. You want to keep doing what you're doing that's gotten you to this point. Um, just don't want to don't want to see them give up mentally. This is McAndrews. He has the lone goal for St. Mary's tonight. 3.20 remaining in the first. Kuczynski. Slaps. Good defense there. Carson Blair, the man so on walk through that pick. Coughed up into the center. Almost turned in. Saved by Newman. Did that make it through? I didn't. I couldn't even see uh, it. There's yeah. a lot of sticks and bodies flying around down there. And Newman, that's a long one. It, wide open is Moss. A lot of room to scamper into. He takes it himself. Wow. wow. That takes some confidence right there to let that fly from 13 yards out. The sophomore has his fourth goal of the year. Nobody touched him. <laughs> is that a timeout by? Yep, uh, that is a much needed timeout by St. Mary's. Goal scored by number 50, Brody Moss. I mean, the energy, I, I, I talked about it early. It's it's coming up spotting every single time here. You look at the, the heads of every spotting player after that timeout call. It's up. They're celebrating. They're looking to their guy saying, hey, you know, this, let's keep this rolling. You look at St. Mary's, demoralized, right? They're kind of hanging their heads. It seems like spotting can't miss right now and <laughs> it's been great uh, and then they're winning at the face off X and defensively shutting the door Newman's started great well it's the I mean they're also I mean Spalding's also playing with confidence right yep. now I mean, I mean you're there's, seeing these replays there, right here there, there's a level of swagger that they are playing with I mean Moss just came down and let one fly on a fast break from 13 yards out. I mean, that, <laughs> you know, n normally you wouldn't necessarily want to see that shot, but just the, the sheer swagger of being able to let that one rip, you'd love to see it. St. Mary's have been in a downward spiral record-wise this year. You know, they start off the year pretty well, about 3-1, and one, but they have lost seven straight games coming into this one, including losing to McDonough in their last game. So they just need something to pick them up, and this is not helping. It's these these in county games too are are just they're. It's one of those where it gets you it gets you fired up, and these are really important to win because you are you're around the other kids constantly, right? You 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 do the same things, you're involved, you're in the same friend groups. You might go to different schools, but there's just there's always that extra layer when you're playing it in county opponent. Yeah, I'm sure they, they both circled it on the, the schedule as soon as it came out. Right now, St. Mary's with a, a goalie change, so we'll see how that plays out here. Now in goal is Augustus Haas, the junior. There's Logan Earl, who's been really one of the main men back there this season, seeing almost every one of them go past him. 2.10 to go out of the St. Mary's timeout at 7 to 1 for Archbishop Spaulding. St. Mary's got the switch there that time. It's a good switch.
Could be a penalty there. Off ball. Decent move wow. for Bennett, and he got through. Gordy. Seventh goal this season. I mean, they're finding a lot of success from that two-man game up top and from behind, Andrew. Yeah, again, I think they, they had to have seen something on, on film that said, hey, we, we can goal exploit the defense. Goal. Maybe it's a communication issue. Maybe it's uh, you know, just a lack of athleticism on, on ball and, and, and off ball. But they've gone after it time and time again already. And, you know, they've, they've had three or four goals off that exact play. Well, great. <laughs> Who would have thought it'd be eight one towards the end of the first quarter, Andrew? Did that that cross your mind? <laughs> it definitely didn't. <laughs> but you know, I'll I'll definitely take it. Especially this is a, a huge response for Spalding. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, second half versus Gilman that was you know, very underwhelming. You can either respond the way they're responding tonight or you could have, they could very easily put their head down and said, you know what, we're in the MI double A, it's gonna be a long road. You know, let's rebuild. But Coach Hockle said it's one of the best best practices of the year. The day after that loss to Gilman, I think that's carrying over here for St. Mary's. Yeah, it said the seniors really, really stepped up and responded. Oh, Look at Mullet there! Oh. oh my gosh! <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it, but the people in the booth have <laughs> lost it. Have lost it. Oh my goodness. Grady Swiderski scoring. Someone, someone get the gurney. Here it is. And he gave him. And a little scoop. And look, he collapses into the goal here, Harrison. One of this team's wow, best defenders. My God. He was just fighting for his life at that point. <laughs> Brady just played him like a fiddle. That was awesome. And there's one minute to go. And it's another face-off win. I mean, that, felt, I that felt a little unfair. Uh, well, yes, it felt a little was, unfair. And also, I feel for him because that has happened to me. And <laughs> I, I, I would like to say it only happened once, but there's been there were a few occasions. It could still be remnants of your cleats in the back of that net <laughs> I, I, from being hung up just like that. But. Yeah, I actually I actually took one of the nets and made a hammock on my porch out of it just <laughs> to, just to replicate the feel. <laughs> Mollett coming in the game with 30 points, you know, a, a team high. He's As a freshman, we talked about him last year on the broadcast, you know, just didn't quite – you could tell there was something there. He had the vision, you know, he could, he could find the back of the net, but physically just wasn't as dominant. He was a little undersized. Yeah. And, and this year, you can tell he's put on a little bit of weight and some strength. And I think the biggest thing is he's got confidence. I mean, you, when you take a beating every single game and you're getting significant minutes as a freshman – you show up as a sophomore with, you know, a few extra pounds on your body, it, it shows. I mean, it, it's, it's hard not to have confidence in that situation. And right there, I mean, <laughs> that's just an unbelievable individual effort by, by Ma. Put him in the spin cycle. And then the, the most important thing. No rinse. <laughs> no rinse. <laughs> left him out to dry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the vision. It, it's, it's hard to have the composure in that situation when you just put a guy on skates like that to be dodging with your head up looking for the next man, the next opportunity, and he did. He found the guy on the doorstep, and he buried it. He's already so doing that. Imagine what his ceiling can be. Exactly, exactly. Kind of reminds me of a uh, Steel Stanwick, the way he likes to play, use that crease, for the sure. back of the net to his advantage. Offensive foul against Archbishop Spaulding. So there's seven seconds for St. Mary's just to maybe get one more idea, and it's not going to happen. Wilbur came off and cut it away, and that's it. Wow, insane opening 12 minutes. Spalding leading nine to one against St. Mary's, and we'll take a quick break here. You are watching Archbishop Spalding Lacrosse. Hallmarks of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. 
Spalding. It laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They were challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and that transitions directly onto the field. That consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant. I'm excited for our Cavs. Start of the second quarter, 9-1, to one, Spalding leading St. Mary's. Christian Taylor, Andrew Skelly, Sean Hatley here with you. Wow. Uh, I mean, what is there even to say about that first 12 minutes? Well, Sean, let me have it during <laughs> yeah, intermission. You said uh, there's a little bit of lack of energy. You know uh, what? No, I, I need I, more energy out of you, Andrew. I'm laser focused here. You know, pe people tune in for Andrew Scally, and we need to give the people <laughs> what they want. I'm here because of you. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I apologize. I let the team down. I've got this laser focus. You know, I think I'm, I'm taking a, a page out of Spalding's playbook right here. Nine to one, they came out, just blew the doors off of St. Mary's. More energy, took care of the ball, winning the face-off battle, shutting them down defensively. Right now, I think the goal looks a mile wide for these, you know, the six on offense. Everything is dropping. So it's a long game, though. No, no game was won in the first 12 minutes. Yep. And I think that's part of my focus here is, you know, you got a job to do. Yep. And I you think that was a lot high. of the messaging from, from the coaching staff this week is, you know, no game is won or lost with a single play, but it, it can be a huge momentum builder. So um, I will try and bring more energy. But right now, they got a job to do. <laughs> Don't try, Andrew. Do. Do. I should be a doer. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. If you're St. Mary's, you're down like this at this point. How do you start making your way into it? Next goal. Next goal. You, just, you, you have to focus on let's just let's break this, this, this streak and let's just put something in the cage, right? Then see, then see where things go from there. Well, I think the other thing they did there is, one, they brought the uh, you know, goalie back in. And then they settled into a zone. So it's the first time they've, they've shown the zone against Spalding. It slowed them down a little bit. But right now, the, the clock is not St. Mary's friend. It, even though there is three quarters to play still, you're down eight goals. Right? you got to start making plays and, and getting the ball back on the offensive side of the field. Yeah. Turnovers like that can't happen. Yep. Really you quick. Get yourself back in the game. Reaction by Duffy. And turn it again. <laughs> I'll Love it. What. Love it. I'll tell you what. Alec Howard. St. Mary's famine is turning into Spalding's feast right now. <laughs> did you just come up with that? I, I did just come up with that. And you guys are lucky I didn't stumble over it and botch it. Nailed it. There's another turn. Howard, just his fifth game played this season, just his third goal of the campaign. 10 to 1. That's a spot Alec Howard doesn't typically find himself in. He's. he's Typically the go-to guy for a big step-down shot, you know, big frame can really bring, you know, bring the heat offensively. But right there, came off the crease, received the ball, a little bit of composure, and buried it. Yeah, and Spalding's without Jake Wolf tonight. Uh, Jake suffered an injury in the Gilman game, so he should be, uh, everything's all right, but he should be out for another game or two. And Diego, Diego's still out. Yeah, I mean, I, and we're missing missing a couple pieces of, of that team that are important to the team, and to come out and, and do this, I mean, it just shows the depth that Spalding has right now. Yeah, it's great calling some, some new names and some names you haven't called very often. Sharing the wealth. That was Pierce Johnson-Clark who took a step in. 10 to 1. By the way, uh, St. Mary's have pulled their starting keeper back in Logan Earl he was replaced by Augustus Haas for a short few minutes a lot of few goals they've gone back to their captain I'll tell you what if I'm that goal I might say you know what coach I'm good let's talk on Tuesday Brim everything ball. was dropping flag all the way up into the sky and down this is McAndrews has the lone goal tonight good slide and now the play will stop with 9.48 on the clock. I, I got to say, Spalding is living up to what Coach Hawk said he wanted them to do, and that was play aggressive defense. They're sliding hard to the ball. They're not hesitating. It's that confidence of we know what we're going to do when we're going to do it, 
And, I mean, they're, they're playing well right now. Hopper is the guilty party. He's down for a minute. And so St. Mary's on the man up here. Down 10-1. They could use anything right now. If Spalding can get the penalty kill here, this would be a huge dagger. It's interesting. St. Mary's with two long poles on man up offense, which is far from conventional. The Spalding student section are counting out all the passes, and there's a save. Newman right back in the path. Oh, that Miller oh, oh, save. Jacob Newman. Look for a little celebration here from <laughs> Newman. Wow. And hang on. Coughed up in a bad area. Here's the chance again. Oh. And they capitalize that time. McAndrews has both goals Gotta for St. Mary's. Gotta clear it. Unfortunately, those saves mean nothing if you can't clear the ball. But yeah, those interesting two long poles. I haven't been following St. Mary's that closely, but it seems they must be struggling on extra man and put two poles in there to try to get the ball back. I don't yeah, outside of looking know. in, I mean, the first thought is they could just be two of the best ball handlers on the field despite having the long poles. Yeah. And then also the way Spalding has been playing offensively, if St. Mary's doesn't convert on the, the man up, they have two of their best guys on the field playing defense. But um, either way, tough goal to give up there. A little momentum shift back to St. Mary's way. So let's see what happens in this next faceoff. That's Bradley Strong. They only just put him in for the first time on the faceoff, and he goes down and scores. So 10 to three, back-to-back -back goals for the Saints all of a sudden. They took advantage of a Spalding mistake and now all of a sudden they have two. Chriswell hounded, but finds a way to pick it up over the head of Hopper. Got it. Matassa didn't see it and Schumer did. Still a big all deficit, right. but St. Mary's now beginning to gain a little more confidence. How about Hopper nearly dragging it out of there? Timeout. It looks like yeah, that's I'd, exactly what happened. I'd call a timeout if I had Robbie Hopper. <laughs> Breathing Hopper down and, your neck. Yeah, yeah, over and over my no, head. Thank you. You can either get a timeout or a turnover. Your, your pick. Timeout, like, is it cool if I scream for the timeout? <laughs> if I'm in that situation? <laughs> Please. Or, like, just Please, go to the for fetal love of God, to call a timeout. <laughs> right there, a couple goals for St. Mary's. I mean, that, that's a, despite it still being a seven goal lead. You hate to leave that window open a little bit. You know, when it got to that 10-1 mark, you said, okay, the door is, is pretty much slammed shut. A couple goals like that, it, it gives, it breathes a little bit of life in the St. Mary's, and they, they get a glimmer of hope. This next possession will be huge for Swan. I'll be curious to see what they come out in. If, if they stick with the man-to-man, -man, if they drop in a zone and change things up a little bit, um, either way, they got to get a stop. I mean, their, their defense is playing well. It's just they had a couple sloppy moments that... Uh, unfortunately, a little reminiscent of the Gilman game sure. <laughs> that you want to see them clean up, but otherwise, settled situations. They're not. They're not playing, so, yeah, they're playing poorly on team defense, defense, right? They're 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 playing aggressive. They're getting to where they need to be, um, winning their matchups. So, I I just don't want to see this. Uh, I don't want to see Spalding lose their head a little bit, their confidence, and see this momentum shift too far in St. Mary's direction. Because right now, we still have 70% of this game left to play. <laughs> there's a lot. Again, I'll trust your math. There's a, there's a yeah, <laughs> that, that I am just making up, so I hope no one fact checks me. Okay, can we erase like, this Sean, recording it's, it's once it's finished? Yeah, it's this is going to be online. I don't need people fact checking. I don't think you're that far off. I mean, 50% is in 8 minutes, 40 seconds. So, I mean, 75% yeah. would have been the end of the quarter. So it might be like 65, 66%. Uh, yeah, 65, rounding error to 70, yeah. you know. I'd... Very close there was Jake Parker. He's on the doorstep. And Newman closing well, the door. There's just a lot of time left. How about that? That, that, that works. Is me. that better? I, yeah, that, <laughs> that, that works. Coffee and I, I, paper. I, stopped, I stopped doing math at 5 o'clock on Fridays. <laughs> 8-10 to go, 10-3 to three now. St. Mary's have scored the last two. Spalding now looking to stop that run. So enjoy some time on offense here. Christian Taylor, Andrew Scally, Sean Hatley here with you. You're watching Archbishop Spalding lacrosse. We have you here all season long. 
except for Sean. He sometimes goes to Florida, <laughs> shaves his beard, comes back, acts like nothing changed. <laughs> Andrew actually, still trying to it, was figure like, you out. it was like one of those videos where the little child sees their dad shave for the first time. Andrew actually started I, crying I and he didn't know who I was. <laughs> it was Stranger danger. 7.35 left. There's 25 seconds on the shot clock. What can Mollett do? Tried another one of his spins. He's absolutely He's hacked here. Double team. He's got to move it. There's two passes here. Move it again. Right on cue. Newell squares it, fired in, Bennett misses. Seven seconds. Still some time to manufacture something that has to be quick. Mollet with three. Shot needs to come. Here it goes. And quickly into the grasp of Earl. I'm okay with that possession. I think it took a little bit of air out of the ball, everybody caught their breath. They took a minute off the clock, didn't turn the ball over. I mean, it was just a solid possession. Unfortunately, it now leads to a, a turnover or a, uh, a flag down here. But play with composure, and that's good when, again, this emotional game, it's a lot of highs, a lot of lows. They took a deep breath right there and, and had a good possession. Another flag. Two are down. I don't know. What these flags are being well, there's called for. Seven guys out there. Uh, That's yep. at least one of them. Not sure about the second flag. I mean, seven guys double the ball, boys. You, ex you expended all your math on uh, <laughs> your percentages. <laughs> I'm over here with tallies. McAndrews for Kuczynski. 20 seconds on this offensive possession. Brimhall. Unable to fully get through. Now he's got something. And it's away. Newman chasing after it. And the whistle stops play with 5.55. I mean, Andrew, logic would follow. If you have an extra man, let's put that extra man on the ball. I go back and forth on that one. I, I, I think that there's, yeah, it's easy to send somebody out there. If you have an athlete out there that can cover ground and play defense, Great, let's go put a little pressure on them. But you're saying have a free extra, have an extra slide. But I think that's you have a free slide. By, you know, I'm, I'm you in the camp of, yeah, let's, let's, yeah. let's play them on the crease, send them early. Because what happens is you get a guy that doesn't play, doesn't play defense. He's typically yep. on the offensive side. Chasing he's, stick. He's chasing, yeah, he's getting out of position and he's hurting, you know, the other six guys Start that are used to playing team defense. So either way, I'm waiting for the, the call here. We definitely had the offsides call. But I don't know what that second penalty was. I still see nothing up on the, the scoreboard yeah. indicating what. Coach, Coach Hockle looks a little livid right now. Yeah, they called he's, that timeout. He's getting here. a little heated. Perhaps for the two flags that were down. I can hear Coach. I can, I can hear his voice in the back of my head, a raspy. You kidding me? <laughs> we, we got it. Just shows just how important this game is. Even up 10-3. Yeah, Coach Coach Hockle's a competitor. He always has been in, in everything he does. Um, but he takes a lot of pride in coaching this team and is definitely a fierce competitor and is going to advocate for these kids every chance he gets. Yeah, and looking for that second MIAA conference win in his, in his career, it's, it's a big one. And coming against a rival like St. Mary's, you know, Coach Hockle went to Spalding, played a lot, you know, you mentioned earlier, Played other sports in the neighborhood with the St. Mary's folks and didn't win a lot of games against St. Mary's in his tenure here. So every win, you know, means a lot for him. Yeah, Coach Hockle led the JV team to a championship a few years ago. And, you know, it'd be great for him to get one at the JV and at the varsity level. It's a 30-second penalty to Grady Swiderski, the junior, who has one goal tonight. And another 30-second also going to Connor Wilbur, who has a hat trick this evening? So so extra what do you call players. it? Interference or still don't know what the call was, but either way, down two men, thirty seconds. They don't have the long poles in anymore. Big slap by Hopper. Spalding have their work cut out for them here. Have been able to survive twenty seconds. Need a couple more. Clegg's off the post. Big save. I like Five the seconds aggressive left. rotation by the Cavaliers on that man down defense. 
Hopper snags, and in he is, absorbing the blow by Kuzinski. Well, I tell you, tell you what, Sean, when you have a guy like Robbie Hopper with the range that he has, you're going to Virginia next year, heck of a lacrosse player. He can cover ground. So if he's able to press out at 15 yards, being down two men, it puts the, the offense in a, in a tough position to make some plays. But he's about the only guy that I would have confidence extending out past yeah. that you know, 10-yard mark of the cage, being down two men. He looks calmer than anybody else out there. That is yeah, that, that is something I'll, I've seen as well, Christian. When he's when he's got the ball, it's very under control. He he feels confident in his abilities to to handle the ball. Bennett was pinballed around there, and no end result. Kaczynski looking around him. I beg your pardon. It is Cunningham looking around him and gets through. Yeah, a few too many face dodges there. You know, make two passes, get back to 6v6, but staying aggressive. I mean, Sean, you mentioned earlier you can't let off the gas pedal. That was a, a hard, aggressive dodge. No, but I do want to see them stick with the ball movement they had early in the game. I mean, they were really sharing Working, the yeah, ball I mean, a, a, a two-man game goals, we talked yeah. about. Four minutes left. Things have settled down just a tad. St. Mary's have the last Good two. Check. And a quick snag. Wilbur, who's back out there. Sawyer Grant with that check. Kaufman got through. Here he is. Runs into it. Quickly flash to yeah. the left. Oh, nice shot. Boom. Alec Howard has another. Look at the sideline. Loving it. <laughs> and that, I mean, that starts with a great check by Sawyer Grant getting the ball on the ground. Great clear. I mean, Jameson Kaufman. I wouldn't want to see that kid running full speed at me. No. <laughs> I'm a little nervous up here in the booth. Right this way, sir. I will I'm get a little out of nervous up here in the booth. Howard, the commit to UMBC. That is a finish for sure. Again, great call on Alex's name, a name we haven't called in, in a while. Bit by that injury bug early in the season, but can clearly fill it up when he's on the field. So good to see him back and good to see his confidence flowing. It's all performed decently well in that Vandermont great game. win by Chris Well. It's really nice to get those face-off wins late in the quarters, right? You can, it gives you a chance to milk some more of that time off the clock, get yourself to halftime with a, you know, hopefully pretty solid lead. Yeah, it's demoralizing defensively. If you give up a goal after either transition plays, a long 66 possession, then you, you know, swatting plays, make it, take it. It's, it's going to be tough to defend that. Unfortunately, I know all too well how that goes, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I still wake up in cold sweats. Matassa, hounded here. Schumer, he's one of the best defenders on this team. The voice of the defense. He's committed to Georgetown for next year. The idea coming from Adelman. Didn't pass it till the last moment there. 2.40 left. That's a big hit. The ball squirts free. Wow, flag, flag down. down. Another flag, two of them. Looks like there's a little, some extracurricular conversations going on. There's a little bit of jawing from Todd Freeman and the coaching staff settle him down. So it looks like Freeman will be out. Just a matter of what else is going on here. Tell you what, referee's been very deliberate in their delivery of these uh, penalty calls. It looks like this waiting. might be full time. A legal body High check. One full time. Of, yeah. That's against the junior, the LSM. 11 to 3 here. I'm sure the referees understand, too, this being such a rivalry game to. Make sure things are under control at certain points. Yeah, I would say up to this point, they've kind of let them play, which has been good to see. It's been a physical game. It's been a fast-paced game right there. I, I'll be honest. I, I thought it was a clean play. Yeah, I think um, he, I think he kind of hit him, hit him from the side a little bit, kind of that. As he was falling, yeah. it, was, it was kind of a, uh, a dodge to nowhere. Yeah. But Got a running start at him. But still, I'm, I'm with you, Andrew. I didn't really see anything too egregious on that, that hit. It's a two-minute penalty. Wow. Full time, too, I believe. Yep. Full, two minutes full time. Let's see if Spalding can take advantage of this. 
Here it comes. There's one. Jack Newell. Low to low. I I love the fact that there's been several different Gore scholars in this game. You know, everyone's getting a piece. As I say, everybody eats. Goal scored by number six. And now we got a, a, a man up faceoff opportunity here. We play make it take it is, is one thing if you're going six v six afterwards. When you play make it take it and you're going six v five. Yeah. That's tough. That's tough. But hey, love being on this and side of the Ryan, wall. And Ryan, Ryan Criswell is definitely one of the one of the toughest people you'll see at the faceoff X going to Navy. Look at how nonchalant he was of getting that to Wilbert. Yeah, it's almost as if they conceded that faceoff, looking to just get their, their defense set. Spalding leading 12 to 3. Last two goals have gone their way now after they conceded twice. And I haven't seen any Ethan Ostrowski out there. Um, just got info that he's out with an injury right now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, they're missing three, three big contributors on, on offense. And well, they can have that, that next it. man up yep. mentality. But that, was wow. what, that was what Coach Cottle and Coach Hawk were talking about at the beginning of the season. They have a lot of depth. A lot of kids that can contribute um, and can play a multitude of different positions. It's a rare look there after that miss by Bennett. Not many shots haven't hit the cage for Spalding. And it's I like the look. Away. Yeah, I like, like the, the look. look, but just got away from there. It's a, uh, not something you usually see from Brady. No, it was an errant pass, and honestly, I think it was a little too unselfish. I, he, he found himself at let's say six yards, no one in front of him. He could have crow hopped five times and good ride. Walked right Great in ride. Yeah, Connor Peck had no <laughs> chance there. Settle it up here. Settle it up. And Matas has got it. By the way, 30 seconds yeah, left in that good penalty. Good timeout. Yep, timeout. Good timeout by Evan. Look at the sideline. Tons of energy. <laughs> yeah, Brady, it seemed like the guys slowed down. Maybe they thought there was a whistle or something, but Brady Mollett got, got walloped. Connor Peck just could not get out of there. Three people hounded him. No, that was that's exact that's spalled in the cross right there. Riding hard. They were not they were not gonna let them get that easy clear. Twelve to three here the score. Eight different goal scorers for Spalding to this point. Two different goal scorers for St. Mary's. Two of them belonging to McAndrews. And the leading scorer for Spalding is Connor Wilbur, who has three. Howard has a brace. Matassa has a brace. Otherwise, so many other people have contributed here tonight so far, and we're not quite yet to halftime. I am. I got to say, I'm a little disappointed. Uh, Wilbur has fallen off his one goal per minute <laughs> streak. Oh, um, one goal per 50 seconds, maybe. Per, and maybe <laughs> even less, yeah. So it, it's fortunately other people have stepped up, but if Wilbur can step his game up a little bit more here, uh, we'll be in a good spot. One. Either way, Spalding's in a great position here. You know, up up nine. Twelve goals in the first half, Andrew. Anytime you can put a double digits in, in a full game, you call is, that good offense. What are you do in the first shot? half? <laughs> Unfortunately not. Huh, it seems like it. In sixes <laughs> there are. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it. <laughs> One minute left. A dream first half for Archbishop Spalding. And it could continue. But that dream has turned into a nightmare for St. Mary's. Opportunity, oh, another big save. save. Earl needed it. That was it. a great save. Yeah, Wilbur Gotta getting denied it. on the doorstep. Oh. St. Mary's are back to full strength oh, now. Yep. That was All right, not so you gotta, something you, you want to do reset. right there if you're St. Mary's. That was just an unfortunate, uncontrolled push in the back. Hang on, they're going to drag this back because they want to get this clock straightened out. Yeah, I think it didn't get the reset. They're now setting up the clock. But for Spalding, I would love to see the ball die on this side of the field. Go into the half, either put the ball in the back of the net with a few seconds left or, or you, you let it die here. You don't want to give St. Mary's an opportunity to score low clock situation in the second, you know, end of the second quarter. Give them any momentum going into halftime. 15 seconds, foot on the gas pedal here. Takes a deke back to the top. Bennett 
Toying a little bit. Unable to get something free. Two seconds. Opportunity. Oh, wow. Kick save Earl. It's okay. It's okay. Prevents Spalding from going up by 10. And folks, we have reached halftime. 12 to 3, Archbishop Spalding leading St. Mary's High School. And folks, we'll take a break here for the half. Second part of this game is due up next. You're watching Archbishop Spalding Lacrosse. Great. As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance. And if you let them, these halls will take you anywhere. Hallmarks of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They're challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and that transitions directly onto the field. That consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. Getting out the car, walking to school. I was anxious, nervous. It's a bigger school than I've ever been to. Didn't know any faces. I remember sitting in that homeroom and feeling all of the nerves and the anticipation and excitement of what high school could bring. But I quickly found out that this was going to be not just my school, but my home. Everybody had open arms. There's a genuine love for one another. Everybody knows everybody. I care about all of the people I'm surrounded with every day. When you choose Archbishop Spalding High School to be your home, you are getting a large school that feels like a small family. You are never alone in this experience at all. At the end of your time at Spalding, you're going to remember how Spalding lifted you up in the most positive way. You're always going to feel that connection. You're going to want to come back home. The Spalding community is definitely one that I would describe as united. There's a genuine desire to serve, to exemplify Christ. And we see that every day in this building, from something as small as a senior helping a freshman with their locker, a teacher comforting a student. We see it in the smallest and the largest acts of kindness. I knew it would actually be my calling to strengthen the faith life of the students that were around me in the way that I had my faith life strengthened as a student here before. There's a million different people, a million different backgrounds. People come from all over the world. But the fact that we can all come together on faith, that's literally the embodiment of one body in Christ.
The growth of this school is unbelievable to me. The opportunities that are afforded to these students, it's impressive. The nature of our size impacts the growth because of the options that our size enables us to offer our students. We're very deliberate about knowing emerging trends. We have so many different academic programs. We have so many different co-curricular programs. If there is anything that is of interest to you, all you need to do is ask. And it's great to see how the school and the athletic facilities have improved over the years. When I have friends who are alumni reach out to me and I tell them that there's now an engineering building, it tells you the health of the school which is embodied by the people who make it up. That's why it's been so successful. That's why there's so many opportunities at this school. I think I immediately knew when I came for that open house seventh grade that like everything I had heard was true. I didn't know what to expect because I'd never been to a Catholic school. I didn't know much about it. It invited me into a lifetime of experiences that have been unforgettable. The kids are passionate. You walk in, there's a little bit of electricity in the building. That's hard to describe. It's something that you feel. I, I care about school now. I care about all of the people I'm surrounded with every day. I know they care about me. And it's this sense of community that's enabled me to be able to push myself. And grow through service. I feel like it made me a well-rounded human being. I know that Spalding has everything here for all of my children, academically, emotionally, physically. Whether it's clubs, whether it's sports, they're going to be leaders in and out of the classroom. What I hope and pray is that at the end of your time at Spalding, you're going to remember how you felt respected, included, and that you always felt one in Christ. The opportunities afforded to these students just really speak to the success of this school. It's impressive. It's more than just learning at school. Like, it's taught me how to treat people, how to grow in my faith, rather than just giving me an education and sending me off to college. When you choose the Spalding experience, what you're getting is an environment that cares for the individual. This is a place where we welcome people home. You're going to grow so much. I know it may be nerve-wracking. This school is bigger than what you're probably used to. This school, this community is truly like no other. You will find innovation, a deepened faith life, family. You're about to have a very crazy ride, but some of the best years of your life. I still remember my first day. We get to school and my mom is like, don't be nervous. And I'm like, I'm not nervous. But I was freaking out. I really had no clue what I was walking into. Everything was unknown and uncertain. What if I don't find my friend group? What clubs am I gonna join? Did I bring my lunchbox? Each step that I took closer, I could feel my heart race this mixture of anticipation and excitement, the fear of the unknown. From the moment stepping on campus, like I immediately knew everything I had heard was true. I found what I was looking for. A lifetime of experiences that have been unforgettable. High school is where you figure out who you are. And Spalding cares about that. Academic activities, there's something here for everybody. Whatever it is that you are looking for, we'll provide it for you. The most challenging, relevant, cutting edge programs, the International Baccalaureate Project Lead the Way. Well, it was all Spalding in the first 24 minutes of this game. They lead 12 to 3 against rivals St. Mary's, Christian Taylor, Andrew Skelly, Sean Hatley here with you. It was really incredible. Eight different goal scorers for this team. Connor Wilbur really started it all off. He had a hat trick to get things going really in the first three minutes of this game. They really didn't look back. St. Mary's had a little bit of a shout scoring a couple back-to-back -back goals, but after that, Spalding did exactly the same, and it was a dream first half for them. Yeah, I think they dominated really end line to end line, everything in between. It was just a unbelievable firing right out of the gate. Everything was working, and it's 
I said earlier, you don't win the game in, in the first quarter with the first goal, anything like that, not even the first half. So I'm curious to see how Spartan comes out. They can maintain that energy level, maintain that composure, and continue to do what they did in the first half. I think you got to come out hard. you got to punch St. Mary's in the mouth. Take away any hope that there's going to be some comeback in this game and just keep taking it to them like they have, like they did in the first half. And it looks like, did St. Mary's change their goalie? It is still Logan Earl. Oh, it's still Logan Earl, okay. Saw him warming someone up. Through everything that happened in the first 24 minutes, what was the most impressive for the home side? Well, I think offensively it's got to be their, the shooting opportunities they got to. We mentioned good takeaway there. But they were getting a high percentage shots, and the scoreboard reflected that. I mean, they, everything was dropping, and it was a shared responsibility. We were calling names out that we hadn't called you know, very often in the season, and you know, some guys even with their first goal of the game or the, uh, the season. So they were sharing the wealth, and they were getting a good high percentage opportunities. Price is right sound effect there. <laughs> it got me. It got me. <laughs> I was looking at Christian. <laughs> burr, burr, burr. Well, St. Mary's with their first offensive possession here in the second half. Spalding did very well on defense. Jacob Newman made his good fair share of saves. The commit to Mercer. 40 seconds. Watch that moving pick there, bud. Got to get your feet set in the paint. Stan Souza. Look at that. Swatted away. There it runs. And Schumer will stay with it here. Dangerous pass, but he got it off. Not ideal. A little too far ahead. But quick reaction time for McAndrews. Wasn't pretty, but they found their way down. 10.30 to go. St. Mary's down by nine. Certainly looking for some sort of an adjustment here in the second half. Spalding looking to keep the energy up. Yeah, I think if you're St. Mary's, offensively, you got to look to get to a, a comfortable spot, 6v6, keep the ball off of Spalding's side. I mean, every time the ball's been on that side for Spalding, they've, they've capitalized. So as long as the ball stays down here, and they can, they can slowly chip away. But uh, the clock, like I said, is not their friend. And so you can only be so patient here. they got to start putting their own uh, gas pedal down and, and going towards the cage. But tip your cap to Spalding. They've been playing sound team defense, and they now find themselves 15 seconds left on the shot clock. You know, with St. Mary's having real no window to, to shoot. There it comes. And, of course, yep. I'm going to stop talking now. I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> hey, you know, it's not, it's not your fault, Andrew. Well, lu luckily you were talking because it didn't give me a chance to compliment the defense right before. You I, did it, I, I did it for you. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Than Souza scores that goal for St. Mary's. It's his first of the night. Really didn't even mention his name at all in the first half, but now gets something going, and it's the first goal for St. Mary's in quite a while. 12 we, to 4. Did we do the math on that, how long it's been? No. Calculating, calculating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to estimate about 8 minutes of playing yeah, time. Spalding quickly jumping mm. back the other way. Like Settle it up toss here. Toss a force that a little bit, yeah. Keeping the pace up here. That's Andrew Reese. And they're going to usher him out of there. Now it's Newell, <clears throat> who is guarded by Palmer Austin, also an important part of this defense. Yeah, I like that matchup. I, I would be happy to see them kind of spin it a couple times and get it back to Newell. Wow, from I'd also like that. I also like that. <laughs> Wilbur scoring his fourth. Connor Wilbur, let's go. Great take. A little four piece. Hey, man, it's that two man game. Great pick. Comes off. That's just. Almost has as many goals tonight as he did coming into this game on the season. It's, 
it's demoralizing for St. Mary's when you're essentially playing take a penny, leave a penny <laughs> with Spalding, right? You you go down, you get a goal, Spalding comes right back, wins the face off, takes it right back, right? It's just you can't gain ground that way. Well, there's always been an answer, too, from Spalding tonight. When St. Mary's score, Spalding had the same exact answer. They scored two St. Mary's, Spalding scored two. Yep. And Andrew, Andrew doesn't know what leave a penny, take a penny is because he just he's the kind of guy that takes the pennies. I'm a crypto of, guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm crypto. <laughs> no, no, okay. you just, you, at the 7-Eleven, you're playing checkers, I'm playing chess. Okay, you're playing checkers, I'm playing chess. To the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Eight minutes, 20 seconds left. In case you're just tuning in, Spalding are in the black, St. Mary's in the white. And the referees will adjust that shot clock again. But Christian, to your point though, is Spalding's ability to stop the bleeding quickly, right? They're not they're not letting that one goal turn into two, turn into three. You know, they're St. Mary's will get their goals, but then we St. Spalding come right back down, put one in the net. Well, as Coach Hockle had said, you know, they had some mistakes in the last game and it kept snowballing. Tonight they've stopped them. Yep. I mean, and that's been that's been huge. So a little bit of time for the Saints to maneuver here. Down by nine. Kosinski flashing it to the top, and Souza all of a sudden has a couple. Yeah, it's good look, good handle, good finish. I think Spalding kind of got caught sleeping there, back on their heels. But I mean, it's tough for the goalie to be able. I mean, it's, it's up top, releasing. It's tough to kind of get yourself set when they're moving the ball like that. Worked its way through a few defenders as well. Been a few different face-off men tonight for St. Mary's. It's Bradley Strong there who has one goal. And the Saints win it. Taken across by Connor McAndrew. So now St. Mary's looking to build off of that goal. They're going to just slowly work their way into this. There was maybe a tiny part of this game where they had a bit of the momentum. And it was quickly dropped short. St. Mary's, not the most ideal year at 3-8. and eight. Started it off well. Recent goings have not been fantastic. Can't let them beat you in the middle of the field like that. Got up slide there. At least force them down the alley. Gannon Cope, mentioned his name early in this game and has another crack at it. 30 seconds on the shot clock here. Seems like St. Mary's is playing with a little bit more pep in their step this, you know, to start this second half. Spong's been able to answer, but, you know, they're definitely finding that next gear, so it's going to be pretty tough for the rest of the game how they finish this possession. Perhaps being down like this just allows you to take extra chances. Extra risks, since there isn't too much else to lose. 6.35 to go. They call it. Yep. There we go. They, 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 they've way. had a couple of those that they've, I think they've gotten away with or haven't really turned into something. But A little too high. Flag comes in behind the play. Offsides. Yeah. He fell, yep. he fell over the midline. So here, look for Spalding to take a lot of this shot clock off. Get a good look at the cage, knowing that they can get the ball back after a dead ball. Go man up. Schumer really chasing down Matassa right now. Not keeping him that far away. Midway through the third. 13 to 5 here. Get something here. Wide Good open. Luck. Matassa. Now he's hit. Loses the ball. Spalding looking to just still keep this going. They found it. Another flag. There we go. Yeah, there's the other one. And I tell you what, I think that it was a missed call by the referee. I thought when the ball had hit the turf, St. Mary's had gotten enough of a possession for them to blow that play dead. They didn't. You know, and it resulted in kind of a helter-skelter play and, and another penalty for Spalding. So they have the opportunity to maybe be two men up here depending on who that second penalty was on. We have already seen a 
two-man-up scenario overall in this game tonight. Let's see what pops up on the scoreboard here. So it looks like right now for St. Mary's. Just one in the sin bin. So 6v5 here. And this is an area offensively that Coach Cottle has been focused on. It's been a roller coaster for the man-up unit this year. You know, sometimes it, it feels like they can't miss, and others it feels like they can't catch. So we'll see who's out here on this possession. Too high on the shot. It's Than Souza out there. Close call there. St. The Mary's uh, I mean, not liking it. Uh, Spalding still had that. It's a good call by the ref. 40 seconds left in the penalty. Spalding up eight. Crossed wow, into the middle. Great Jack look. Newell. Great finish, Jack Newell. <laughs> well, we're doing a little bit of everything now. I, I love Jack because he just, he could win the lottery and he would have the same demeanor. It just, he's just steady Eddie. Yep. Composure. I, I, you know, you got, you got to appreciate, doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low. He's like, he's like no, another day <laughs> at the out. office. <laughs> another day at the office for Jack Noel. Indeed it is. That's his second goal tonight. Jack, you won a million dollars. Cool. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> This will favor the Saints. So they're back to full strength here. Sean, you win a million dollars, you back in the booth the next week? You guys wouldn't see me. <laughs> I this just, would be I'd, named. I'd, I'd, I'd be stretching that in South America. <laughs> I mean, I may be back in like 10 years once I run out. but this press box sure. job would, will have been filled. This yeah. press box would be named the Sean Hatley press box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is this, a, a, a chili dog vending machine in here? <laughs> what? There's a response for St. Mary's, and really a man who's been pretty good tonight, Jamison McAndrews, he's had three. We would have full catered meals every single game. <laughs> Elevated on that shot. Christian would ride in on a tiger. It'd be perfect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it looks like another penalty is coming up. This time it'll be to Robbie Hopper of Spalding, it'll be one minute. Can you get a Tiger for less than a million these days? I know people. I, the last time I looked, okay. South American, must, I mean, must be, we got connections. <laughs> Andrew, I'm not gonna give my sources up. <laughs> we're, we're, we're live. See me after the game. <laughs> well, I am a smaller guy. You can give me smaller animals, save you some money. Just oh, a house cat? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's a large house cat, Christian. I'm going to pause on this for a moment. 441 left. They're battling with a little bit of offsides there, and it's going to land in the stick of Connor Wilbur, and he's off uh, to the races. Connor showing off his wheels. Full of speed there, yeah. Yeah. That just... I think I pulled my hamstring just watching that. <laughs> so still 35 seconds left in that Robbie Hopper penalty, so perhaps an opportunity just to stave that off. And there's still 55 on that shot clock. Just a mad chase for it. St. Mary trying to add pressure, looking to get the ball back as fast as possible whenever the Cavaliers have it. Sean, this goes back to your point about having that extra man on the field and, and applying pressure. Well, there's Bennett there it passes is. to his left. Right there. Yep. Uh, that just proved your point. Well, even, even before the goal, you know, you're sending a guy out, chasing the ball 20, 30, 40 yards away from his, you know, that hub of the defense. You tire him out and you overextend yourself and you expose the other guys defensively. Right there, Spalding took advantage of that. Yep. Had pressure out almost to the sideline. You make one man miss, you connect one pass, and you get a 10-yard step down. And you can't even match your goalie there. Yeah. You, you hung him out to dry, and you know, I mean, he's got to turn and rake. The only, the only thing is you have, you have to send. I mean, with the, the score like this, in the, this deep into the second half, you have to send <laughs> the second guy to try to double fair. the ball. Yeah, that's fair. Got to, got to get the ball back. The hopper is released now. By the way, uh, as good as he's been tonight, Mollett, that's just his first goal. Done so many other things this evening. 
Yeah, he's kind of been the, the straw that serves the drink this year. He's involved in nearly every single offensive possession, whether his name's showing up in the, in the stat sheet or not. He, he just gets the offense moving. He's communicating out there. Uh, we saw early in the game, I mean, just putting the defenseman in, in the spin cycle. Um, but other than that, I mean, he's just he's in every single play. And that's a sign of maturity. He got a lot of time as a freshman last year, as we mentioned earlier. He's got a ton of confidence. Good run out there by Spalding. It was quickly I mean, snagged by Cope, but he missed. Hats off to, to Spalding's, I mean, defensive middies, but, I mean, they're, they're a close defense. You know, you got Brock LaRochelle anchoring that defense with Grayson Dunn and... Um, I mean, with Newman and Cage, it, yeah. And then you have, and you have Newman and Cage. You just, it, yeah. It's, it's a solid group. And I would say last year they were kind of, you know, the heartbeat of this team. And the offense was young and struggled a little bit. This year it, it seems like a balanced attack. And tonight is no, yeah. no deviation from that. It's been pretty sound despite that turnover right there. It's been pretty sound offensively and defensively. And that's, that's a sign of a, of a – maturing team and a team that's kind of on the rise and that's exactly where Swall needs to be you know given that this is only their third MIAA game there's still plenty of schedule left to play you want to peak at the right time and that's that's not just this sport it's every sport you want to be playing your best across at the end of the season or your best you know sport at the end of the season going into the playoffs there's a race for it at the sideline it yeah. nearly dragged back in there that's a great pickup if I could, I would have put a, I'd have put something in on DraftKings that Robbie was going to get that ground ball. He's feeling it. But a, another player on defense that I've been pretty impressed with this game is Carson Blair. It, seeing him out there, he's been playing really aggressively. He's had some some really good one-on-one -on -one defensive stands. Um, a name that I haven't really, uh, that I don't think we've been calling too much, but. I, just today, it's definitely caught my eye in some of the aggressive defense he's been playing. Just his fourth game of the season. Yep. Minute 20. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Sean. The only reason your name is getting called on defense is if you're making an unbelievable play or you're getting, or you're getting beat. absolutely beat. Yep. Yeah, so not having your name called quite a bit means, you know, you could be a sound player, and I think that's, yep. that's shown tonight, and you're giving a little love, which is, which is great. Nice yep. little shout-out. One minute to go in the third. Hesitating with that pass was Matassa. Saw it could have been cut off. 15 seconds. Lots of action there in front of the cage. Howard being one of those. Jump shot, no good. Lands into the stick of Schumer. 40 seconds on the game clock here. Good hard drive by Spalding. Taking it to the center All sides. for Cope. Yep. It's a good call. 32 seconds. He might only have five forward, though. It could have been a, a substitution mishap, so they might go back on it, but... Convening on this one here. Uh, as it looked like Spalding were going to take over... Slowly but surely, everybody else just started shifting back towards the St. Mary's goal. An attacking goal. 30 seconds to go. Yeah, you got to appreciate the refs talking about it and getting it right. Now it's 20. 15 to 6, the score. Cope pivots Good to the top. Stick by Robbie. Oh, that's got to be a no call. Uh, yeah, that was. Got to be a no call. That's. A little bit of a bailout there by the referee for St. Mary's. Shifts the net there, that shot. Wow, nice hustle by Jameson yeah. Kaufman there to run that out. Seven seconds left, give him a chance. Let's see what they manufacture. JMO. Too tall for Hopper. Turnover. And St. Mary's will just go through the formality. You know, you, uh, you spend all that effort running the ball out and then throw it away. It's just, it's tough. And that is all for the third quarter. Spalding almost there, winning 15 to 6 right now. And into the fourth quarter we go. You are watching Archbishop Spalding lacrosse.
hallmarks of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It's always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They're challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and that transitions directly onto the field. Where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. Entering the fourth quarter, it's 15 to six for Spalding. Christian Taylor, Andrew Scali, Sean Hatley here with you. Well, this game just about 75% over. Yes, hey, <laughs> Neil. I can do that math. I can't do that. You were ready for that one. Oh, oh I, I've been waiting for it. <laughs> waiting for it's it. Like all 70? Quarter. No, that's not right. That's not right. <laughs> I had to get my calculator out of my phone. <laughs> How do both teams address this final quarter? Uh, that's a great play by Wilbur. Chriswell into it, oh. saved. And another pick up oh, by the wow. pack. Mullet with two. I mean, when uh, it. That kind of sums it up for you. Yeah, I was going to say, I that mean, when, when it, it rains, it pours. I mean, a great save by the goalie, but Mollet in the right place at the right time picks it up behind the back. I mean,. Starts with Wilbur, unbelievable ground ball and, and the composure to be falling down and get the pass up. And, and Christian, kind of to go back Ooh. to your to your question a little bit is now for Spalding, it's not so much you know the the, the, the starters and the guys who get a majority of the playing time, but you start to go deeper into your bench and get some of those guys <laughs> some playing time, get them the experience so that when it's their turn to step up, right there. They've, they've had a little bit of that experience under their belt. So I think right now, try to preserve you know, your players as much as you can. Try to get some other people some looks and you know, continue to play the lacrosse that you, that you normally play, but just trying to work some other guys in there. And here, yeah, you got to send Mollet over the box. Managed to stay onside there. Stick got pulled over to the, off the St. Mary's offensive end. Now without stick. St. Mary's trailing by 10. Sitting towards the bottom right now in the MIAA. Is that one smothered by Newman? So Jameson got a piece of that before it got to the cage, but either way, good on-ball defense. Newman with another save. Wide open in the center here. Kaufman thinking about it. No good. Right towards the corner. Another flag down. And we'll see what this one is. Should be going against the Saints here. And it's Jamison McAndrews. 30 seconds. Is it just me or has the wind died down a little bit here? Looks like it, maybe. Well, Andrew, you lucky because this window was open a little bit before you guys arrived. So you I closed it, for me. it a little bit. Yeah, I, I know you would have blown away. You would have been a call. Yeah, I appreciate the that. Back of the door. He would have, he would have been you. complaining about being cold the entire time. <laughs> I might have left. So thank you. Christian. I might have left. I appreciate left. it. I wouldn't, wouldn't want to listen to him. I tell you what, though, not in the Sean Hatley press box of, of the future. <laughs> no. Wait till that Powerball hits one million. Apparently, is all it takes for a new booth and a tiger. No, it's so. gonna have climate controls in each chair. Oh, the seat warmers. Yeah. Okay. It's Leather. Be little just climate controlled tubes that we'll be in. It'll be perfect. Just about two minutes gone in the fourth. And Schumer thought it was his. Reluctantly gives it back to Spaulding with one second left in that McAndrews penalty. And now he's released. And in comes the next player. Good awareness there. Tonight. I got to give it to Schumer. He looks like. Oh, my gosh. Good look by Wilbur. Tough Schumer's been playing out. hard, even though it's kind of tough to keep that motivation when, you know, when you're down 
And he is going to Georgetown. There's a big goal. That's Gaten oh, Cunningham, by the way. That's a commit to Christopher Newport scoring. That is, uh, that is a pole goal. Normally the most exciting play in sports. But... St. Mary's. St. Mary's. <laughs> 16 to 7. St. Mary's have another goal here now in this quarter. Cunningham, one of the top returners. They've mentioned that he's just 100 miles per hour every time he's out there on the field. And D3's Christopher Newport will be getting a good one. Play there under head coach Mikey Thompson. That's a program that has really turned around the last what, yeah. four or five years. Mikey Thompson's done a job with that yeah. team. He's former Virginia, Virginia player, right? So. He go, yeah. 9.40 to go. 16 to seven for Spalding. St. Mary's with the ball again. Bradley Strong's come in. He's been able to at least, he still hasn't been 100% successful, but slow down Chriswell a little bit. Oh, that's unfortunate that's, play there. Yeah, Turf monster. Thanks, Friday night, Susan. rearing its head. Souza, who has two goals tonight. Oh, there's that wind. Yep, spoke too soon. Goodbye. Wow. <laughs> Andrew. That was Just nasty. Kidding. And there's wind, or there's rain coming down now, too. Yep. With the Windy ball is mine. Let's see if we can finish this game clean. Great check. Right here, Spalding take a little bit too long to get their offense set. Substitution was a little sloppy and, you know, yeah, turn it over right there. And it cost them there. Wide open. Yeah. Surely had to be a goal. And it's Jake Parker. 16 to 8. Timeout for Spalding. Yeah, Coach Hockle cannot be happy with that nope. sequence of events right there. I mean, it, it's an area that they take extreme pride in. They want to win that matchup, the subbing game, the transition game, you know, winning between the restraining lines. And right there, they are slow to get their offensive players out there. They were sloppy with the ball on their sticks, almost went over and back, ended up turning the ball over and leads to a goal. Yeah. And, yeah, it's an eight-goal eight lead right now. But the last thing you want to do is give this St. Mary's team any hope, especially with this win. You know, there, there's, there's some odd things going on right now. And you don't want to give it back to them. Wow. That is and that is some wind. The door here in the press box just flew open as well. And uh, Coach Hockle, when we were zoomed in on that, you can see him right now. He is very animated right now. Uh, to your point, Andrew, he was not happy about that series of events. It shows a little bit of uh, a lackadaisical attitude, almost like you've won the game. But there's still eight minutes left. And, you know. I'd say we've seen crazier, but it's well within the realm of, of possibility. So I mean, This team has some scores, St. Mary's. Yep. Well, really, it's just an unnecessary play. Right? Get, get the ball in. Don't be too cute. Get back to what's been working for you. Settled 6v6. You, you push in transition. If you have it, great. Take it. If not, pull out. Take your 6v6. Take some time off the clock. Put in the back end that they've proven that when the ball's on that side of the field, they can score. So why, you know, why force the issue in other situations? Big face-off here for Swalden. Indeed it is. Strong against Chriswell. There you go. Chriswell really battling here. All six players going for it. And it belongs to Spalding, at least for a second. That's a big slap by McAndrews. Fell into the Good stick ride. of Cunningham. Another stick has fallen down on the ground, and it wow, ends up as Spalding's. Yep. Brady slowing it down. Looks like both teams had full possession for a couple times. Yeah, indeed. Well, the Spalding team, one of the better records overall right now in the MIAA. Of course, McDonough and Boys Latin doing their thing. Boys Latin just beat Loyola Blakefield earlier today, 11 to 8. There's yeah, a shot and a goal. Good look, good take. Newell has a hat trick. Jack Newell. That's a great find right there. 
Yeah, head Sharing up, the ball. Head up while he was dodging. By the way, you see Gordon Bennett was giving him the ball. What a night Gordon Bennett's had. He's had some good moments here. And Newell with another power ball celebration. Yeah. <laughs> No, but yeah, great. It's great box out there by Criswell. Great job by Gordy to dodge with his head up to be able to find Jack, right? A lot of times guys are dodging with their head down, trying to get by. And great play. Now you just see these two teams continuing to hustle, even with the game where it's at. Really hasn't been all that close here this evening. It's gotten maybe as close as about seven, but that's about it. Otherwise, it has been all Spalding this evening. Seven fifteen left. Pleasure to have you with us here tonight, folks. Christian Taylor, Andrew Scally, Sean Hatley here with you. you can hear that wind into our mics here. Seven minutes. It's a turn by McAndrews. It's thrown towards the top. Now Souza, he's working on a hat trick, bouncing it across the end line. If we go silent, it's because this entire box blew away. <laughs> You're no longer here. Yep. <laughs> 25 seconds to shoot for St. Mary's. I'll take it to Kaczynski, who's been a little quiet tonight. Good Didn't stick. even get its way to Newman. Good stick by Grayson Dunn. Good ground ball. All executed That's a little nicely. Cause turnover yeah. for Mr. Dunn. A lot of composure there. Get the ball up. Find Newman. Still got to clear the ball. But with 82.75 percent of the game <laughs> gone. You know, that's Actually, a huge I think stop. That math is pretty that, good. That, that's a huge stop for Spalding's defense. You know, at a moment where, you know, it could have gone back the other way. St. Mary's with a long possession. That, you know, they shut the door. Big calls turnover. Nice ground ball. Good clear. And now you got to start thinking about the clock. You can ease up, in my opinion, a little bit off off that gas pedal. You know, given the nine goal lead, you stay. I mean, you stay aggressive, right? Take what they give you. You don't need to be crazy. But it's okay to share the ball, eat up some of the shot clock, and and you know, again, let the ball die on the offensive side of the field. 35 seconds on the shot clock. That's Kyle Harrison defending for St. Mary's. Spalding looking to get that clear shot. Wilbur, not quite. They'll try a different angle now. Howard almost went over the goal line. Lunging save by Earl. Tell you what, that was a, a typical shot you would see from Alec, kind of that 10-yard step-down shot. He, Today, he's got a couple goals at the doorstep. Kind of found himself in uncharted waters there. Yeah, that's Big save by the goalie, though. But, that's again, a good hard ride back by Spalding. Tough turnover by St. Mary's when you're trying to, trying to get anything going and to turn the ball over just. Five minutes left. It has been a goal fest this evening. Turned into it, Bennett. Doesn't go all the way back. It in fact, it took a touch and into that stick of Pierce Johnston Clark. And St. Mary's wasn't able to clear last time. I think the wind maybe took that one a little bit. Ten seconds to get it over. Might have to rethink my tea time tomorrow. This wind. That was the chilliest day of the week to coming up tomorrow. I know. Does it impact putt putt that much? <laughs> Hey, he's uh, a Tiger not, Woods of mini golf. It's not. It's not gonna. <laughs> not gonna impact my game. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Could help it. <laughs> yeah, it's blown the right way. <laughs> Four ten left. Things slowing down just a little bit. This is what is next for Archbishop Spalding. Next is at McDonough. That is on the sixteenth of April. Of course, McDonough seven and one this season. The always difficult. Then they're home again, April 19th. That is against John Carroll. We're sitting right now at 3-5 and five overall, and then at Severn on April 26th, and that's just about how the rest of this month pans out. Yeah, McDonough's playing as good a lacrosse as anybody right now, and, and a, a game like tonight, 
that Spalding is putting together is is huge for momentum. It's going to be interesting to see what happens the next week of practice, kind of leading up to that. It, it's you can't sit back and rest on your laurels. I mean, they've seen, you know, this season, and, he, and honestly, in each individual game has kind of been a game of runs and a games, uh, you know, wins and losses. So. Um, I love what I've seen from Spalding, but I, I hope they can continue this momentum going into the rest of their season. Again, a handful of games left, but good showing here tonight. It's a good little dip there by Jamison McAndrews. Maybe been one of the true bright spots tonight. Looks like Jackson Hines is getting a little time in on defense, number 30. Hines, who has played just two games this season, and a timeout is called with 3.05 to go. So St. Mary's will drop down to three and eight. Once this game concludes, Spalding up to seven and four. Just a very abnormally not ideal year for St. Mary's. They've been known to produce talent and put together good seasons. But whilst they have had a lot of good players this season and players who will be playing at the next level, there's still a bit of season to go, but this just not quite up to par as what they've had in the past. Yeah, I think they're they're a young young team, graduated a lot of seniors, so you know, it's you know, you you don't want to say rebuilding years, but you know, I mean Spalding had a year last year where there was a lot of freshmen and sophomores um, starting on varsity and it's uh you know, you, you need to get that experience before uh, before they really step into their own. We said at the beginning of the broadcast, this game had the opportunity for both teams to either kind of catapult them into the, you know, the second third of their season, you know, or or go the other direction. Uh, fortunately for Spalding, it, it's been the former, not the latter. Um, so we'll see, again, see how they respond to it. Because it's you know it's kind of Spalding has shown a little bit of the my uh, save. Spalding shown a little bit of the the. Dr. Jekyll, or is it a uh, Mr. Jekyll and Ooh. Dr. Hyde, or Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Um, yeah, where I think it's the latter there. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Uh, as you can tell, it's been a while since I've read those books. <laughs> um, but I think the, right right now they are they are playing good lacrosse. I mean, obviously the Gilman game was tough. I mean, they played a tough game against Boys Latin, who's a good team. Um, the, I, they they have the ability. They just need to put four quarters together, and I think that's going to be. The skill is there. I think the biggest challenge for them moving forward is putting those four quarters together, um, and it's really gonna it's really gonna be a test to see how well they do um, in doing that against McDonough. That's a great point. I, th I think today was, in my opinion, the first game that they were able to do that. Both ends of the ball, it was a complete game, and you got a lot of guys stepping up and and not necessarily making the big play, but they're making the right play consistently. And, and when you can do that and you, you can dominate the face-off X the way that they have, you can go up against anybody, right? And, it's, and you're going to be in the game, you know, in the last few minutes of that fourth quarter. So um, here with two-minute penalty, they can basically take this thing down to a minute. But, again, a, a complete game, offense and defense. Coach staff has to be happy with his performance. And the players, you know, it's, it's a heck of a way to respond after a second half against Gilman like they, like they played. Looks like they're going to make a goalie change, Archbishop Spalding. So off is Newman, entering is Bo Wardle, the junior. Yeah, and Andrew, one thing you're bringing up is, you know, winning face-offs. And that's the one thing. Chris Well, not flashy, but he's just tough. He's gritty. He gets those wins. Yeah, getting it um, done. And, yeah, I mean, it's it's someone that I know I spoke to Coach Cottle at the beginning of the season. He's one of those guys that they have complete faith in every time he step out, steps out onto the X that he's going to be able to, to win that game. So, um, again, great great work by Criswell. Really excited to see how, how he finishes out this year. Offsides there. You see the excitement on the Spalding bench there. So get and this. Evan, Evan Hockle, Coach <laughs> Hockle, coach into the very last whistle. I, you got to love it. 90 seconds to go. And wow, Spalding home and dry. What a performance this evening. 
yeah, this is this is one of those games that you want to win every year. I mean, it's that county game, it's that Spalding, that St. Mary's, that Severn. Those games are always you're you're playing for bragging rights, right? And and when you have a dominant performance like this, it definitely sits well for the rest of the year. Let's put it that way. Um, there's definitely some disappointed people out there, but um, if you're a Spalding fan, you gotta love to see this win, and especially in a dominant fashion over St. Mary's. So get this, if this score stays like this in 45 seconds, final score would be 17 to eight. Final score of last year's game, St. Mary's 17, Archbishop Spalding eight. Yep. As my, uh, as my father would say, what goes around comes around. And these seniors going three and one against St. Mary's. Yep. 20 seconds left. Well, there's that one. There's the ninth. And it belongs to Jamison McAndrews. It's his fourth this evening. <laughs> Crickets from the PA. <laughs> you got to give it to Zach. He's always got the good sounds lined up. If he narrated my life, I, it would be a drastically different life. <laughs> Just the Price is Right sound whenever I make a mistake. <laughs> that would unfortunately go both directions. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, yeah. The I'd, highs uh, are high, the lows are yeah. lower than to, low. Might need to see someone if that were the case. 15 seconds left, and the Spalding fans on their feet appreciating what they've seen tonight. One more hit there, that time by Buczynski. Maintains possession, I don't know how. Yeah, it's Patrick Healy. Oh, he wanted that one. He wanted a goal. And that is how the evening concludes. 17-9 to for Archbishop Spaulding. Connor Wilbur had four goals. Jack Newell had three. And for St. Mary's, their lead scorer was Jamison McAndrews with four. But... What a performance, beginning to end, every facet of the game, Spalding won and dominated, and they now move to 7-4. and four. Yeah, dominant win. Love to see it. Gentlemen, it was a pleasure. Always with you two. Appreciate you allowing me to jump in here, pinch hit again for the great Glenn Clark here uh, this week. Well, we'll recap this one more time. Archbishop Spalding winning 17-9 to against St. Mary's, a rivalry game. It was offense start to end. It was defense start to end, and they got the result. Shout out to all of you watching this one here tonight, folks, on YouTube, and for our entire crew here at Whittles Field, and for my partners, Andrew Scally and Sean Hatley, I'm Christian Taylor saying so long. Final score, Archbishop Spalding 17, St. Mary's 9. We'll see you next time, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your evening.